Listen to the parable first. In the meantime, I will fit the cords onto this tunic of James's. These ones are all worn out. Speak, Master. Then I will make Mary of Salome happy. Yes, I compare the soul to a cloth. When it is infused, it is new, without tears. It has only the original stain, but it has no injuries in its structure, or stains, or waste. Then, with time, and the acquisition of vices, it wears out at times, to the extent of tearing. It becomes stained through imprudence. It breaks through disorder. Now, when it is torn, one must not mend it clumsily, which would be the cause of many more tears. But it is necessary to mend it patiently and perfectly, and for a long time to remove the damage already caused as much as possible. And if the cloth is too badly worn, nay, if it has been so rent as to be deprived of a bit of it, one must not be so proud as to pretend to repair the damage by oneself, but one must go to him who is known to be able to make the soul strictly honest once again, as he is allowed to do everything, and he can do everything. I am referring to God, my Father, and to the Saviour, who I am. But the pride of man is such that the greater is the ruin of his soul, the more he tries to patch it up with unsuitable means that make the damage more and more serious. You may object that a tear can always be seen. Salome also said so. Yes, one will always see the damage a soul has suffered, but a soul fights its battle. It is therefore obvious that it may be struck. There are so many enemies around it. But no one, seeing a man covered with scars, the signs of as many wounds received in battle to gain victory, can say, this man is unclean. On the contrary, one will say, this man is a hero. There are the purple marks of his worth. Neither will anyone ever see a soldier avoid being cured because he is ashamed of a glorious wound. On the contrary, he will go to the doctor and say to him with holy pride, here I am, I fought and I won. I did not spare myself as you can see. Now, heal my wounds that I may be ready for more battles and victories. He instead, who is suffering from foul diseases, brought about by shameful vices, is ashamed of his sores before relatives and friends and also before doctors. And at times he is so silly that he conceals them until their stench reveals them. Then it is too late to remedy. The humble are always sincere and they are also valiant fighters who have not to be ashamed of the wounds received in the struggle. The proud are always false and base. Through their pride, they end up by dying as they do not want to go to him who can cure and say to him, Father, I have sinned, but if you want, you can cure me. Many other souls that because of their pride in not wanting to confess an initial sin, end up by dying. Then also for them, it is too late. They do not consider that divine mercy is more powerful and more extensive than any plague, 
however powerful and extensive the latter may be, and that it can heal everything. But they, the souls of the proud, when they realise that they have despised all means of salvation, fall into despondency, because they are without God. And when they say, it is too late, they condemn themselves to the last death, to damnation. And now, Judas, you may go and get the cloth.